You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast. Hey, hey, what's going on, gang? John Wentworth here, Thoroughbred Podcast. Uh, first, I just want to thank you for continuing to follow us. You can find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. We've got a special guest in the studio today. Speaking of studio, we are in our new studio. What do you think? I think it's outstanding. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more, really. I mean, it's a perfect setup right here. She's good, eh? <laughs> and you're going to get to know her on a deeper level. But again, guys, just thank you so much. I want to always provide valuable content. Um, you know, a thoroughbred is important to me as a racehorse, but, uh, you know, the secondary definition is an elite business leader. And uh, inside of that, we're going to dive deep today with Miss Sarah Minter into real estate Hello? and her transac- transition and her transactions into right? real estate. <laughs> Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much. Of Happy course. to be here. Of course. Love it. So tell us a little bit about who Sarah Minter is. Wife, right. husband, no wife. <laughs> no wife. Mother. But I do have husband, <laughs> mother. So um, yeah, I'm married to Eric. We have been together for almost 11 years. We have a 10-year-old little girl. She is in fifth grade at State Road Elementary. Love it. Uh, it's a wonderful school. And yeah, she does horseback riding and we do a little bit of outdoorsy stuff. We like to hunt. We like to, you know, just take walks, be out and about with everyone else and nature and you know social people a little bit of everything for this area some water fun she uh, can tell you uh, her I can, entire I can life keep in five, going. In five yeah, seconds so. i'm just getting started right now so you know. tell us about listen i met sarah i don't even know when seven and a half years Se- ago dang i know my things she knows her stuff see mm-hmm. seven and a half years ago um she comes from a service industry with a servant's heart yeah, and that's where I met her was in the service industry and uh, never knew the day would come when she would <laughs> knock on our door to to join our team and to get into real mm-hmm. estate. But I did know in that moment that she would do great, that you would do great uh, because of her servant heart and because of her ability to communicate with people. Um, so tell us about, w- w- look, how long have you been in real estate? What inspired you and, and how has it been? All right. So really to start, I mean, goodness, I was thinking about real estate probably at the beginning of the year. And I just wanted to get your feedback and get your opinion and, you know, really kind of investigate a little bit because it was completely new for me. Because like you said, I mean, I've been in the service industry probably since I was 16 and we're not going to talk about how old I am now, but it's been a while. (laughs) Well, this is going to be great for for the newer agents Mm -hmm. to the industry um, because we talk about this all the time, being a newer agency, where the hell do I go? Mm -hmm. Who's going to help me? Can I succeed? The failure rate in our business, you may not know, is 97%. Agents fail at 97%. But go ahead, take it away. That's okay. That's okay. No worries. It's going to be really good for those people to stay tuned and know that if you're newer to the industry, and there's going to be nuggets for everybody, Mm -hmm. but if you're newer to the industry, this Mm -hmm. is someone that's doing great. How many pending and closed do you have already? Oh, goodness. Um, I've only been doing it a few months, and I think I'm six or seven. Seven. Seven right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know she didn't know for sure because she's more committed to serving people than counting how many exactly. pending she has. Exactly. It's not about the numbers. It's about the people and getting out there. And, you know, it, it's a buildup. It's a, a commitment. You have to put some time in. It's not an instant thing. Yeah. But I, I like that because, like you said, coming from the service industry, I mean, I've got that background where I can talk to anybody. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. Um, I have a real drive to help people and be there if somebody needs something, which is exactly um, the type of thing real estate is, yeah. really, at the end of the day. I mean, it's basically the same animal, just a different color, is what I always like to say. Um, so instead of talking somebody into getting one thing you know, and helping them choose, I'm helping choose a home. Yeah, it's you know, that, yeah. So you know. it, it's all relative. So tell us about your you joining the team. Mm-hmm. Um, you've you've done great things in that small amount of time, um, and and I can tell you one of the reasons because she buys into the system. Mm-hmm. Sarah, here's what we do: if you follow this and you work hard, you're going to do great, and that's mm-hmm. what she's done. Well, I mean, really, at the end of the day, um, yeah. I mean, I haven't been in in it that long because um, as I was starting to say anyways, which I keep forgetting, get off track, and I start talking about other things. But uh, so I met John about seven and a half years ago, actually working in the service industry, and I wanted to contact him because I started thinking that it was maybe about time for me to make a little bit of a change, and I just wanted to get his feedback and find out exactly, you know, how things work. I had never spoke to anybody in regards to real estate, and it was so wonderful. He brought me in. I got to speak to the staff, and honestly answered some questions and asked me if I had any questions for him. And I said, I've been watching him for seven and a half years. So, <laughs> you know, if, if I had any questions, they were probably already answered, but, uh, worked out well. And, 
And I think with any type of change or any type of um, industry, you really have to go full in. I committed completely. I mean, after I spoke with him, I was so fired up. I'd already done some of my own research, so I wasn't going in completely blind by any means because you don't want to do that either. You need to know what you need to be able to commit to to make yourself successful. And so I was like, okay, I'm getting a new computer because I hadn't had a new computer in 10 years. Yeah. You got a sweet one, too. Oh, I, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I'm not messing around. <laughs> but I you know? love the word committed because, uh, you know, I always ask people this. Are you committed or are you interested? Mm-hmm. Because if you're interested, you're likely to join that 97%. Right. If you're committed and you're coachable and you buy into the systems already put in place, mm-hmm. you're going to succeed. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you know, and I, I did the uh, online class myself, but I tell you what, I was sitting there studying. I went in there. I passed my exam and... I gave myself a vacation for a couple of weeks after that, <laughs> but then <laughs> I came back full force and it's been, um, you know, every day, like John said, I mean, this is probably the best place to be. I can't imagine it being run any better because oh, wow. really you are, we are given every tool that we need to succeed. And I think that's super important. I mean, it's not just, oh, hey, thanks. Here's your desk have at it. It's, you know, it's support from everybody. It's support from John. It's support from, um, you know, the, the ladies in the back that help us with all the paperwork. I mean, everyone is super helpful, super happy to jump in, help out, answer any questions. Um, you know, I can't imagine it being any more a supportive group than what we've got right here. And that's that collaboration piece. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you even mentioned it, not knowing, and you know, sometimes other Mm -hmm. agents have lived outside of of a team and been in a singular brokerage where there is no support or very little, right? And Mm -hmm. there isn't training, there isn't coaching, and there isn't somebody handling a lot of the things that we handle for you, which then allows you to focus on the things you need to focus on, which are prospecting and serving your people. But you like to pick up the phone too, because her her desk is right outside of my office (laughs) and she is on the phone nonstop. And so- Guys, I just tell you, you know, whether you're new to the industry or you've been in a long time, you got to pick up the damn phone. I mean, you've got to right. prospect. And if you're afraid to prospect, you're in the wrong business. Well, at the end of the day, that's really it. I mean, you can only get so far. You can't wait for people to contact you. There's so many other people out there, you know, putting out their ads and making the phone calls themselves that if you're not going to make the phone call, it's not going to happen for you. And not only the initial phone call, but you've got to do the follow-up phone yeah. calls too. I mean, it's getting actually in front of the people. It's, you know, getting to know them on a more personal level. Yeah, make that phone call, but don't be like, hey, what house do you want to see? Yesterday, and that's I, it. Yesterday I heard Sarah on the phone. It's a, a lead that came in. Now, most people get so focused on the lead in the house, and they're fumbling around on their computer, and Sarah just says, oh, do you have any children? Oh, really? How old are they? Oh, I have a daughter. She just started – had this whole conversation with mm-hmm. this person unrelated to the house because she really cares about the, the dialogue – and the conversation that she's having with them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when you just, people get so caught up in what do I say and how do I say it? I don't know. How do you talk to your friend on the phone? Right. Well, exactly. That's just people. it. Yeah. They're people. And at the end of the day, they don't want somebody that's going to treat them like a number. They want somebody that's going to actually. They don't want to be sold. They don't want to be sold. They want to be served. No, exactly. They want somebody that's going to go out of their way that they feel like they can trust. Because, again, they're not just a number. They're actually a person, and they're being treated like a person. I mean, think. I mean, you go anywhere to buy anything. You go to a restaurant. You don't go back and ask for a server unless they've gone above and beyond. You know, they are personable. They get to know you. They seem happy to see you. And and it's the same thing for any service industry. I mean, you don't want to go into a place that's like, Hey. But this is exactly why you tip well and treat everyone mm-hmm. with, with great respect uh, and a big heart because she was our server for a long time. I didn't know she was ever going to come work <laughs> for us, but I always tipped her well, I think. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I told him if he hadn't. So tell us about, I mean, what's been, there's so many things in real estate, right, coming mm-hmm. at you, especially, you know, I, I think it's a blessing actually for a new agent to join a team because mm-hmm. they don't have this preconceived notion of, oh, I should do it this way or I used to do right. it that way or mm-hmm. this worked 20 years ago right it's okay what's in front of me and what can I utilize but inside of that you know we see that people still have better uh, conversion rates with people on different lead sources Mm -hmm. you know whether it's open houses or Zillow or Mm -hmm. whatever those lead sources are what where have you found that is kind of because we naturally grow to a sweet spot right what's kind of become your sweet spot do you think I like open houses can can you imagine why I like open houses I mean I 
I like the idea that they're coming out. They're physically trying to see the home themselves. They've clearly already done some research. They know where the open house is, and they're driving out of their way. But then I actually get to be in front of that person. I get to have just a few moments at least to make an impression and uh, have a some type of bond with that person, get a little extra information out of them that, yeah, I eventually will get off the phone if I'm speaking to that person, but that, that, hey, you know, it's so great to see you, you know, thank you so much for coming out and well, looking at the home. Well, I think in person, too, there's a great opportunity to gain trust. Well, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Over the phone, I mean, you, it could be Scarecrow and Mrs. King on the other <laughs> <Right>. line <laughs> just talking kindly, but it, when you're with somebody and you get to meet them and you get to look them in the eye, uh, by mm-hmm. the way, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, in our industry right now, everybody wants the instant gratification right. lead, mm-hmm. and that doesn't exist. No, um, it, it's the old school. I mean, those leads are great, and, mm-hmm. and you can definitely um, create some relationships and, and transactions from those leads. But to me, I when I started, I did four open houses a weekend. Mm-hmm. I did two on Saturday, two on Sunday, mm-hmm. and if people didn't come to the open house, I went to the neighbors and knocked on their door and handed them a flyer and thanked mm-hmm. them. But but you know, I could set up. I mean. We do it. We've done it. We've coached on open houses. Right. Here's everything you have to do to be successful in open mm-hmm. houses. And as soon as they don't get a, a, a transaction the first week, they're like, oh, that doesn't well, that work. That doesn't work, but yeah. it does. No, you just have to keep going. But the same thing going, going along with what you said about door knocking. I mean, I've door knocked too. I mean, I've got clients. I've got a client that wanted something. And so literally, sometimes that's what you do. You take yeah. your business cards and you walk around. I walked around downtown Holly with my business cards, literally going into any place that was still open asking if they were interested in selling because yeah. I had someone that was interested and that's how you get stuff done. I mean, yeah. you can't wait for it to fall in your lap. You have to. Well, and go, I mean, you do, you've got it. When I started in real estate, the market was tanked. Mm-hmm. I had zero money. The market was tanked and everyone said, what the hell are you doing? You're getting into <laughs> real estate. You're never going to make it. Right. And the market's no good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but at the end of the day, I just had a, a desire to succeed and to serve people. And mm-hmm. so I did whatever it took. You know, mm-hmm. doing four open houses a weekend, um, sending thank you cards, right. you know, all of those little things. So that open house thing, I mean, just to give some nuggets for, for agents watching or listening, do, uh, do open houses. It is the greatest ROI possible in real estate because mm-hmm. it costs you about 20 bucks unless you serve a mimosas and right. then it's 30. <laughs> well, I mean, that'd be really bad. That'd be no, really no, do you want that? Yeah, you don't be, want $10 mimosas. That'd no. be either really cheap uh, OJ or really cheap champagne or bull. Either way, it's not good. That's yeah, not good. <laughs> if you're going to get mimosas, get the good stuff. Mm-hmm. But, but honestly, you know, I mean, you, you set up some signs, you go live on Facebook, you put some postings on Facebook, yeah. you, you show up early, you greet everyone at the door, you ask mm-hmm. them to sign in because the sellers do want people to sign yeah, in. Yeah. They want to know who's yeah, exactly. there in case something goes astray. Um, and then you figure out where they live. Mm-hmm. You send them a card. Mm-hmm. Yes, you handwrite it. So this would be Monday. You go back to the office and you do all of this work. Bomb bombs are yeah, good. Bomb bomb videos. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that resource, I mean, a bomb bomb video where you can send them your face. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for coming to the open house. It was wonderful to right. meet you and your husband, Rick. Mm-hmm. I'd love to provide you with any help I can. Mm-hmm. You don't try to sell them. You're just you're just, just talking. That you're just door. just speaking to them. Just that, that way, door. it's not just always in their face. Hey, buy something. It's like no. Hi, thank you so much. Appreciate the time you spent with me on Sunday. You know, have a great day, and that's it. You know, you yeah. don't have to sit there and you know constantly be shoving you just have that to down open the, the door. Throat. Yeah, open the door and let them come back and respond. And it's, it, it it's turns out like showing a house. You're not going to sell the house. No, no. You know, our client, our sometimes our sellers, like, well, you need to be there and sell the house. I'm like. If they don't like it, you can't sell it mm-hmm. to them. You can point out certain things, obviously, mm-hmm. but you're opening the door and, and you're helping them walk through that process. Same thing with, with follow-up, I right. think, is that mm-hmm. you can't, look, detach from the outcome. Right. Get attached to the process and detach from the outcome. And if you continue to follow that process, the outcome will take care of itself. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. mean, it's not like you're going to write 20 business cards and sell 20 homes or it's 20 letters, but if you do that consistently, you're going to gain traction inside of it. Right, that. and even if that person doesn't buy a house, they've got friends and family and acquaintances that may need to know of a recommendation. Yep. And so even if that person might not actually buy that house or decide they're not in the market, they've got other people that are. What have you found? I mean, like, okay, we're painting this beautiful picture. What have you found is challenging? <laughs> challenging, um, let's see. So far, uh being a new agent, I um, I think I let some people almost take a little bit of advantage of my time and whatnot, and I let them run my schedule a little bit more than I should have, where 
I think, you know, when you're newer, you have this great desire to be able to do whatever you can. And I can't say no, I have to do this because this is what I have right now. But at the end of the day, you're not doing yourself any favors and you're really not doing that client any favor either because, you know, you need to kind of reel them in. You need to help them focus. And by allowing them to run your life, is not doing that. By the way, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the client she's talking about. But but there's a parallel, honestly, between a new agent doing that mm-hmm. and an agent that's been in the market a long time. Like maybe an independent agent that's been in the market a long time because I remember being an independent agent. Mm-hmm. When you don't have leads coming to you, mm-hmm. you're on that ankle. And right. you're like, oh, I got to sell them something because the only damn lead I have. Right. And it's I think that's the other beauty about our environment is there are so many more opportunities that when you mm-hmm. when you have someone like that, mm-hmm. it's okay to let go. Yeah. And uh-huh. it's liberating to be able to yeah, let go. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was funny because, yes, I literally had pain in my back. And as soon as that happened, I haven't had it since. <laughs> I haven't had it since. And it's been like a month and a half. And I'm like. Ah, yeah. and that's fine. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. I mean, it's going to happen. There's going to be people that, you know, you know, are very demanding and that's fine. But, you know, you've got to got to be able to be like, OK, then this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And I think it's OK for the consumer to be demanding. It is mm-hmm. our job to service them. Yeah. It, it, you cross a line when people become uh, there's a difference between being demanding and being a yeah dork. That we'll, was the nicest. We'll, that, that was the nicest. That's way a I, great being word. A, being demanding and being a Richard. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think when people start trying to stomp on you, stomp on you, then it's time to time to move on. So I'm proud yeah. of you for that. Good yes. job. Thank you. Um, where do you where do you see? You know, I mean, I, I always like to ask these questions to people newer to the industry because you're starting <laughs> to get it. I mean, really, what she's going to answer is what she thought before she was here. Mm-hmm. How did you see real estate before you were in it, and now that you're in it, where do you see it going? Before I got into it, I'm, I think it's probably the same impression that a lot of people have where it was not going to be quite this involved or quite this much work, if you will. Because I think, you know, a lot of people, they see um, things on TV, they see the poster boards and they see the ads and commercials, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, that's not that difficult. They see the signs up and open house, you know, the things uh, are presented differently on like TV and in the movies and then you get to reality. And yeah, yeah, we do that, but there's a lot more prep and a lot more work and research, if you will, than I ever thought. I mean, I got to learn how to do all kinds of uh, <laughs> new stuff that I never imagined. And um, yeah, so I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it, it it's, looks a whole lot easier. It looks than a it lot is. easier than it actually is. And not saying that, you know, it's um, too much, but it's just something where, you know, if this is something you want to do, again, you have to commit and you need to plan you know, that this is what's going to be going on. You know, I need to be able to commit this much time. Yes, and I will need to be able to be available for my clients because, again, you have to think, you know, people work 9 to 5. And a lot of times when they're working, you're doing your research, you're looking into other things for them, but then when they're able to see stuff, then you need to make yourself available also. So be that a little bit earlier in the morning, be that a little bit after they get out at night, which is fine, you know. I mean, and yeah. and that's what you do. You accommodate their well, schedules. Well, I mean, that's that's just like when 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 we're you know following up with leads yeah. at ten a.m. Mm-hmm. Well, no shit, they didn't answer. They're at work. They're at work. Yeah. Your job is to get a hold of them. Right. So if they didn't answer at ten, call them at five. Exactly. And and I think that when they don't answer, people feel like, oh well, they don't want to talk to me. No, they're at they're work. They're at work. Mm-hmm. And, and so you you've always got to be in in tune with that. And mm-hmm. I think the the other parallel when we were talking about you know, the idea of being newer to the industry or being in it a while is um, holding on to something that isn't going anywhere is no fun. Right. Um, and then also throwing yourself into something that isn't going anywhere is no fun. But I, but it is going, that's just it. I mean, it's, it's a very fluid. Where is it going? Where is it going? It's a very fluid um, industry. And I think that um, it's moving forward always. And it's just that you need to be able to a- accommodate and like uh those changes that are going on in the field and be, and yeah, thank you. Adapt to those changes. Otherwise you're fine because otherwise then you do drop out. If you don't have that in you to adapt to change, then no, you won't do well. But I think if you stick to like what resources you've provided and use your bomb bomb, you know, get, you know, make a more personal bomb bomb for, for our viewers that may not know what it is. It's a video email. Uh, It's, it's, 
it's the cat's meow. It's a great product. <laughs> it's a great way to get in front of people rather than just sending an email. And mm-hmm. by the way, email isn't dead. It's how you email. Mm-hmm. It's how you email. So, yeah. But it's, it's still a form of communication. But it's nice because, yeah, then they see you again. It's You're a person, not just a some voice. words on a piece of paper that are easy to uh, – Erase, yeah. So you're prospecting for our viewers. Let's yeah. just say you're prospecting. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you found as what's working better for you? Calling, texting, bomb bombing. I would say calling. Calling works best. Um, so I, even the old school, old school talking phone. on the phone, old yeah. school talking on the phone. Bomb bomb's going to come next. Um, if you just text or email. With nothing extra to it, a lot of times you don't get as many answers. I mean, though, I will say I did a very nice mass uh, emailing and texting over the last week. And yesterday I sent out uh, 200 and I received about 130 back. That's so, huge. Which is huge. So I, I mean, don't know that math. Chris, can you do that math real quick? What percentage is that? Um, I'm not even going to try. What would you say, 133? I got. Uh, I sent out 200 and I got about a... Uh, 133 back 200 i sent out 200 i got about 133 back what is that chris about 70 percent he doesn't even he know doesn't how to do know. math he doesn't know. it's about 70 percent 66 and a half mm-hmm. maybe um that's huge yeah but i think it's also in the way that you write that email or that text because i'm always i'm not like generic you know i want to throw a little personal flair right. to it you know so it's like hey i hope you're having a good day thank you so much for your time i appreciate you looking this over please you know get back with me if i can help you in any way it's not what what's the best tool tool as far as I mean, is it bomb bomb is it boomtown is it um i mean like what what tool have, do you lean on the most inside of I our like, company right now you know it's it's never just one thing i think it's a collaboration of all the different tools because you know uh, I love uh, Boomtown. You know, you you get the leads coming in that way. It's a good way to organize everything you've got going on and keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done and that sort of thing. Yeah. But then um, you use your Boomtown with your bomb bomb. I know. And, it gets, you know, it gets and hard. It, it gets hard. It gets hard. To say. There's a lot of things. Like, so you're booming boom, and you're bamming you're and booming. And you're bombing and you're doing all kinds of good stuff. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's not just one thing. It can't ever just be one thing. Because if you stick with one thing, you're missing out on everything else. Yeah. Everything else dies and drops to the side, and you're not getting people the way they need to be reached. Because not everybody responds to different forms of communication the same way. Which That's is another why, great tip for everybody is yeah. that you've got to figure out what is you know if they're if they're communicating via text and mm-hmm. you're trying to call them. I mean, literally, you know, there are people right now, they don't want the phone to They ring. don't want the phone All to ring. All they want to do is mm-hmm, text. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there are people that don't want to text very right, much. Right, right. So it's our job to figure out what that is. Right. I mean, goodness, like you've got some people that are older that don't even email or don't do anything like that. So again, you know, a phone call is what it's going to be. I know, goodness, what, we've had clients before that don't even have computers. And yeah. you have to call. You yeah. have to call. That's the only way to get a hold of them. So again, you know, you can't make, you can't try to fit everybody into that same one category. It's an individual basis, and I think that as you learn how to, you know, as you learn how to get a hold of people, and you then learn how to best communicate with them, right? And what's going to work for each individual, and that's how you continue on. You don't just, hey, everybody gets an email, and I'm done. And if you don't answer me, I guess you didn't want to talk. No, you keep trying. Yeah, if that, if your attitude is if you didn't answer me, you didn't want to talk, then you end up the ninety-seven percent. Right, exactly, because <laughs> nobody is buying anything from you. No. Oh, exactly. Have you ever been on a billboard? I have not been on a billboard. No. People say to me all the time, "Oh, you, I, I saw has. your billboard," and I'm like, "I haven't," because right. I, I just don't go drive and look at it. Mm-hmm. But um, we're talking about building this campaign of you know and and putting agents on billboards and you know high level producing agents. I think that's going to be fun. Something that we're going to talk into. I love. That I haven't idea. talked to it about anybody else. It's you're the first to hear about. I love it. it. I think that's a great idea because again, it takes away. Um, we want to promote the agent, and I think so mm-hmm. more often on teams, agents feel like, oh, well, it's all about John Wentworth, and right. you know, and what leads me to that is Facebook, because mm-hmm. I'm always pushing the team. You've got to live on. The, I mean, if you don't know it by now, this is the world. <laughs> That's it. See, it's a. <laughs> this is the world, and Facebook is television. Everybody's on it. 
So you've got to yeah. be on it. And you've done a very good job. Because look, at the end of the day, billboards are a lot of money. Mm-hmm. This is flipping free, my friends. And it reaches more people. And it reaches more people. Um, and so you've done a very good job at that. Thank you, you. You're on all the time. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're at your closing with your JWG sold mm-hmm. sign and your mm-hmm. people. And you're promoting that. And I know you're already hearing in the, in the community, oh my gosh, you're selling a lot of homes and you're rocking and da 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 Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's great. I think, again, it's not just about, like, you being on the billboard. I think it's fun that, and that's a great idea, that you want to put agents on there because it makes it more personal. Again, you know, it, it's not just a big, you know, company, this, that, or the other. It, it makes it more relatable. Oh, I know that person. Right. I've seen them out in the, in the yeah. community. I saw them at the grocery store yesterday. I know exactly who that is. Or, yes, I know this person from that. And it's, it's, it's a great way to make it more personal. Like I said, but and that's why I like John Wentworth Group too, because it's not a big corporate based organization. I've always liked working for privately owned businesses because it, I think it's important that the owner, you know, be involved be and vested. be there and be vested and and it makes I think and inspires the people that are working for them to work harder. And yeah. What about I mean so a newer agent, or mm-hmm. even an existing agent that that doesn't have a bunch of lead sources, right? I mean, we're getting Zillow, we're getting paper uh, pay per clicks, we're getting uh, how's my value lead. I mean, we're getting leads from so many different things. Mm-hmm. If you're a newer agent or an existing agent that isn't on a team environment that isn't getting these leads, what are ways that you would say to them? What are things that you would say to them that they could do to start getting leads without spending a bunch of money? Other than I know you're going to say open houses. Besides open houses, I take my business card and I start door knocking. I'd walk around. I mean, even if it's a neighborhood, you could go to area businesses because, you know, you've always got uh, somebody is looking for a home. And if they're not, then their friend is, you know. And even if you can get out there and give them your card, I think that's a great thing. And, you know, actually, when I first started, I would beg um, anyone that was here to give me their old leads because you don't – just because they're old leads doesn't mean they're trash. That's right. You, you know, just because somebody hasn't spoke to them in six months or a year – or they say they don't, they're not looking anymore. It doesn't mean they actually aren't. They're just needing somebody to reach out again and kind of relight the fire. Well, I think that's the thing, though, because that, that can be a trap, too, because we get so many leads right. that when they don't answer the first time, you're moved on to the next one. And that's another thing you've done very well at is continuing to follow up, you know, that – that uh, that phrase buy or die, which is really stupid, right. but it's really not about them dying. It's about that the lead is really dead. Yeah. And I always say to exhaust the lead. You've mm-hmm. got to exhaust these lead sources, mm-hmm. and you've got to hit them land, air, sea, text, call, bomb, right. bomb. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important. I think another thing people can do is going back to Facebook and mm-hmm. and you know doing Facebook lives. Mm-hmm. Um, take a community and make it yours. Uh, learn about it, educate yourself, and then go do a Facebook live in front of the darn thing. Right, exactly. And yeah. then you can strip that that video. This is a really good tip for everybody. Mm-hmm. You can strip that live video, plug it into your business page, and put a spend behind it, and shout it out to that entire audience that you are the local knowledge expert of that subdivision. I just, I just love the fact that, going back to Facebook, that... Um, you know, it's free. With, with, it's free, which is awesome. <laughs> and then uh, with making posts and putting everything out there, I mean, goodness, just this past week I've had uh, somebody that I haven't spoke to in at least 20 years reach out. She lives out of state. And she's like, hey, you know, I see you on Facebook all the time. I would love for you to be able to help me uh, find a home. And so I've got her already on a drip. I've had people from, you know, the other side of the state. By, get by the way, when she says she has her on a drip, Oh, sorry. There's another thing. That, sorry. That, that I just means she's sending her home. It's sending not her home. Not, not, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a home drip. Sorry. <laughs> Got to clarify sometimes because, yeah. But, yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it's just that sort of thing. I mean, I don't know how many times I've gotten just random texts from people that I hardly ever speak to or I haven't spoken to in forever that are on my Facebook, but because I share these, you know, they're then sharing them with right. people on their pages. They're like, oh, look at this home. This is great. This was shared in this area, and that's how you do your networking. I mean, it's not just... I I think the other thing that, I mean, because getting leads through Facebook is awesome, Mm -hmm. um, but for me, because I don't need, I mean, I love the leads. Don't get me wrong. Don't stop. (laughs) Um, I don't do it for the leads. I do it to try to uh, serve, lead, and inspire people. Mm -hmm. And for me, and I didn't even realize I was doing that. I was just being authentic, and I think that's something you do very well also is being Mm -hmm. authentic with our audience. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, how many people say that, you know, that 
not just me, mm -hmm. what our what our company as a whole is doing to inspire the community. Right. And I just just today because I invited you know a bunch of people to uh, to our ice cream social that we're doing. Shout out to Uncle Ray, Yay. Dave Durant. Thank you thank again. You. It's going to be an awesome event. But you know I was inviting a bunch of people and so many people said I can't make it, but thank you for all you do in our community. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That is huge. Right. I mean, that is a motivator beyond motivators. And, and that's really, you know, I mean, I just, in the last three days, I'm going on three listening appointments from Facebook. So it still is a lead source, but I never. Mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, the fact that it somebody, works, yeah. it's free and people are afraid to dive into it because they're afraid of what they look like. Yeah. But it, well, yeah, I have days like that, <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, no, it, it is about the community. And that's just it. Because when you post stuff, it's not just about, hey, Look at this house. No, you do post about everything, yeah. you know, and what the team is doing. It's for the community or, you know, just personal things, too, which I think that makes a difference. It's not just about the house real it's estate. making or real or selling real estate. It's about making it a like a human experience. What is your goal for your first entire one year of real estate in in uh, in real estate? What does that look like from a numbers standpoint you hope to serve how many people inside of your first year i hope everyone's to, watching i know yeah, all three people all th <laughs> hi three people <laughs> um goodness see that to me i i don't even think of numbers when i think of how many people that i want to help i want to i want to serve as many people as i can and whatever that number is so be it but i know at the end of the day i will have tried and done my best that's so. why she's a rock star. And it's okay. I mean, look, I'm sure she has a goal, right? It, because it, it's okay to have those things. But at the end of the day, if, if, if your goal is just a number, it's not inspiring enough for you to do the work. No. When you really care about the people, mm -hmm. that is inspiring enough to get your ass out of bed and right. do the work and attach to the process and do the things that aren't sexy, the things that, you know, the thing, the calls, the notes, the mm -hmm. letters. Nobody wants to do that stuff. Yeah. It's but, but those that do win. Yeah, it's not just about putting on a suit and going out and showing somebody a house. I love the fact, too, like it's like somebody like Sarah coming in. She's going to do all of this work, and because she does it so well, I'm like hovering over this thing, but because she does it so well, in two years, she's going to have all of that repeat business, and she's going to have the continuum of the leads that we're going to provide her, and she's going to go from, I mean, she'll probably do 20 this year, she'll do four, and then all of a sudden it's going to go boom, and it's going to mm -hmm. explode, and then she's going to have an assistant. See? That's the, I'm not worried about numbers. I just know that I will not fail. Awesome. That's, you will not fail. I will not fail. I won't let you fail. If nope. you do, though, it's on you. No, I'm no. just playing. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I always reflected on me. What could I have done better? Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, I, you know, I'm. We're blessed to have you. Thank um, you. I, I think that uh, you're you're somebody wonderful in the community. A wonderful um, wife. A wonderful mother. Uh, you know, she's got her daughter in horseback riding. So we're always talking about mm -hmm. horses again. Um, but uh, I just want to thank you so much for all that you do inside of our team and who you are and your participation and everything that we do. And also for joining us on the Thoroughbred Podcast. Thank you. Super happy to be here and honored. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. You can find Sarah Minter on Facebook. Shoot her a message. She'll be happy to help anybody out, as will I. At thoroughbredpodcast.com. Again, I just thank you guys so much for, for giving a shit about what we're doing. <laughs> we are trying to serve, lead, and inspire. And also, you know, try to try to help you grow your business. So if there's anything we can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a blessed day. We appreciate you. Bye. Bye.